So my name is Robin O'Leary and I am the GB Power Climbing Coach. Today we are taking the GB Power Climbing Team to the iconic Stanage Edge. So Stanage Edge is infamous with climbers. It's a three mile, three kilometre long stretch of gritstone. Gritstone uh, is a hard sandstone and it's uh, unique to, to Britain. Today we brought them here, one, because it's atmospheric, it's got this amazing scenery uh, all around us, and two, it's got a route that we really wanted to try with some of the team, which is Flying Buttress Direct. So Flying Buttress Direct is a, a top 50 HVS, hard, very severe, and it goes through this big overhang, but on relatively good holds, and uh, we just thought it would be really good for, for Matt Phillips with one arm and a few of the other ma members too. I'm going to place the protection. Two, one to tie me in, one for the clove hitch now. You're looking at that equalise, so if yeah. there's one that's baggy and one that's tight. Make sure it's directional. Exactly. And yeah. Okay. I, I'm Matthew Phillips, I'm 16 years old and I'm a power climber in England. I am missing my arm below the elbow which puts me in the uh, upper, uh, upper arm amputee category. So obviously it makes a huge difference because it affects my reach obviously on the right side and obviously the, the types of holds that I can hold as well. I mean in some cases it makes it better for me, it makes it easier to hold them and in other cases it's definitely much harder to hold them. But yeah, it's the reason I really need to think and adapt my, my style to it and obviously I'm very I'm a very dynamic climber and so yeah, I sort of fit into my little niche. <laughs> little tread me! That's the first lead ever! Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. The team is absolutely amazing. We're, we're all really nice. We all have great, yeah, great banter together and uh, really enjoyable. And I, I'm really happy to be a part of such such a great team. And you know, it's not it's not about our disabilities. It's about what we can do. And we really encourage each other to get on there and obviously we throw around a couple of jokes that uh, might not be accepted sometimes. <laughs> you'll go up there now and you'll just be face down in the puddle. John. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and Robin obviously is an amazing coach, one of the, one of the best that I've ever had, and he's just a really good guy. Do you think his car choice is down to ego more than anything else? I think it's down to, uh, he's trying to compensate for something. Ah. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Look at this guy! <laughs> yeah, so Flying Butchers Direct is a hugely iconic route. It's very intimidating, so it's on a lot of people's wish lists, and it's not necessarily difficult climbing. Rather than myself or Belinda climb the route, which we've both done before, we're going to get Mikey to do it. So Mikey's a very capable climber, a really strong climber. I think he's bouldered V13 and he's sport climbed 8B+. So it's an easy route for him, but he's never done it. It's a top 50 classic. So it gives him the opportunity to do it uh, with ease. And then I think Matt Phillips is going to follow him up, which will be awesome. <laughs> All off wet thing. <laughs> Good there, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. You've been waiting to do that right for here. a very long time. Right yeah, thank you about so it. So obviously you're going to be taking out the gear. Listen. Yeah. Seconding is often harder because you yeah, have to work. Yeah. Because that carabiner is like twice your age, if not older. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Put on my carabiner, it might be nice. Ah. What? You walk up the slab and then you're faced with this overhang that goes straight behind you and it's, it is an intimidating route. So a lot of people want to climb it, a lot of people try it and then they back out uh, and some people fall on it because it's quite athletic climbing. <coughs> Matt oh. does love uh, steep, powerful climbing. He's, it's, it's his kind of favourite style of climbing. He's very dynamic and Kind of reining him in is probably the, the most difficult part about uh, coaching him, but also his climbing. He finds it much more enjoyable to, to throw himself around. <laughs> the 
when Matt climbs it, he's got to stay in control of his feet and hopefully he doesn't just resort to brute power and camp us through the roof. What heel? Shut up. Can't just make up heels, Robin. Uh, the good thing about it is it's on massive handholds. So you reach over. Uh, for Matt's case, he was going with his left arm because he can't reach with his right arm. Uh, most people kind of go right hand around and it's, you're on a massive hole, huge ledges and then there's a series of kind of flakes and, and layers that you can climb up. Um, oh Christ! And it's, it's just intimidating but it's a great climb. <sighs> Matt, whilst you relax, you've got a microphone dangling from you. Oh f***! <laughs> <laughs> uh, what am I meant to do about that then? It's not my microphone, screw it. It's a common trait of Matt to kind of talk his way through a climb, so he was, he was shouting at me, he always does that, so I've used it. But he, he did campus, which I wanted him to, to swing a heel up and do it in much more control, but you know, he's, he's so safe uh, and strong at campusing, so he went back to what he knew best, he cut loose, campus through it, and he did it with ease, really. It was amazing, it looked, it, it looked incredible. That, up here and then to your to your left with some jugs over the top here. I'll just stay down here. I kind of want to hear that audio now. It's going to sound amazing. There's no heel. Shut up, Robin. There's no heel. Campus. Oh, I would like it noted I did save your microphone. So power climbing is moving in the right direction. Every year we're seeing more and more participants, which is great. It's not a Paralympic sport yet, so the Olympics, 2020 Tokyo Olympics, we'll see climbing enter for the first time, and I guess the Paralympics uh, will rely on the success of climbing. So we won't see paraclimbing in the 2020 uh, Paralympics, but hopefully we'll see it in the, in the next uh, Olympics following that. They're all fantastic characters, really, Friendly people, full, full stop, but amazing climbers. Yeah. Oh. 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 I want to see power climbing become much more mainstream. I want to see more disabled people, full stop, take take up climbing. I want to see power climbers on the same kind of level ground as climbers in general. It is definitely the most inspirational thing that I've seen, or most inspiring thing, sorry, I've seen in climbing. And I, I mean, I love climbing generally, so I love watching the, the normal World Cups, but being involved in paraclimbing is one of the best things that's happened to me.